and welcome back. Let's imagine that we have like 20 or 30 devices in one VLAN, let's say VLAN 10 as an example. And is it possible that one device on those VLANs could get some malware or have a malicious user on that computer who could then start either doing reconnaissance or attacking other devices on that same VLAN? The answer is to all the above, yes. So how do we prevent that? Well, if we're sure that we don't want any devices in the same VLAN to talk directly with each other, that, for example, each device can talk to its default gateway, but they can't talk to the device to the left or right of them, we can implement that on the Forda switch with just a couple clicks. So in this video, I'd like to walk you through that process by both verifying communications within a VLAN between two devices, enabling the feature to separate them, and then verify that after we've implemented the feature of an access VLAN, that they can't talk directly with each other. This is also gonna help prevent the spreading of malware within a VLAN because the devices can't talk directly with each other. So let me put the topic here as we're gonna deny intra VLAN traffic. And as a test of this, I've got this device here at dot 99. And this Linux client over here, I think is dot 101. We'll verify that here in a moment. In fact, let's verify that right now. So here is our Linux client. Let's just do an IF config. And sure enough, it is at 10.10.0.101. That's this device right here. And I've got my little Cisco device here off of port two, also in VLAN 10. And it is at dot 99. We'll verify that as well. So here on the Cisco switch, we'll do a show IP interface brief. And right there, 10.10.0.99. And we'll do a show LLDP neighbor, just to verify that our local fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 is indeed connected to our Forda switch. And on that Forda switch, it's connected there on port 2. So I just want to verify that those were the correct addresses. And before denying any intra VLAN traffic, this device here at dot 99 should be able to ping 101 and vice versa. Now, sometimes there are software firewalls on devices like Windows 10 and Windows 11 have a default software firewall. So if you try to ping them, they won't respond. So that might be an additional way to help protect traffic back and forth. So I just want to verify before we implement the denial of any intra VLAN traffic, I want to verify that connectivity works there between this client and the device at dot 99. Let's do a quick test from our Linux machine. We'll do a ping over to 10.10.0.99. And, oh, that's not flying. Why is that? Oh, I know why that is. <laughs> um, it's not, let me do a control C to stop that. It's not flying because 10.10.0.99 is a static address. So it's not in the DHCP snooping table. And so ARP inspection is saying, you know what? I'm not letting that go. The ARP messages because I can't verify the layer three, layer two mapping. So let's verify that real quick. We'll do a, yeah, check it out. Look at all the drops. Um, uh, let's do this. So I'm going to hit the up arrow key a few times and let's take a look at what we have in there. Yeah, so my Cisco device is not showing up there because it's a static client. However, we can fix that. We'll go into the interface for fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 on the Cisco device. 1, there we go. And we'll do an IP address DHCP, and that way it can be dynamically learned, added to the table, and as a result, the ARP messages will work because dynamic ARP inspection needs to get the mapping. So we got the IP address of 103. Let me just verify a couple of pings real quick. So let's do some tests real quick. We'll do a ping up to our default gateway of 10.10.0.71. That's great. And let's also ping 101, which is our Linux box. All right, that looks great. So if we go back to our table here and hit the up arrow key, yep, there it is right there. So there's my Cisco device off of port two with the address of 103. And if we take a peek at the ARP inspection, that number should no longer be growing as a result of any traffic or ARP messages that the Cisco device is attempting on port two. All right, so let's minimize that. And then right here, let's verify that we can ping 103. Fantastic. So 103 is our Cisco device. So if we want to prohibit any devices on the VLAN from talking directly with each other on the same VLAN, we just go back to Forda switch VLANs under Wi-Fi and switch controller. We'd edit the details for the VLAN where we want to enable that feature, either by double clicking on it or highlighting it and clicking on edit, and then scroll down for that specific VLAN. And we're going to flip this switch right here, block intra VLAN traffic, and it is done. So a moment ago, we were able to ping 103, and now we won't be able to ping 103 because the intra VLAN traffic is being denied. However, we can still ping our default gateway. That still works. So in a situation where we know we want absolutely zero device to device communication within the same VLAN, this is a great feature. Now, a lot of times people are, <laughs> are gonna wanna print to a local printer. If that local printer is in the same VLAN, this feature is gonna stop that. So a couple of solutions to that are, don't use this feature if they have a local printer like on the same network they need to print to, or put the printers in a separate subnet and then allow traffic through firewall policy to go from those devices over to that printer and that would work as well.
So thanks for joining me in this video. In the next video, we'll take a look at the concept of storm control, another really great feature as part of Fortiswitch. So until then, I hope this has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.